Hello, welcome to the Rich and Simple Living. My name's Maria, and if you're new here, I vlog food things normally, although I do throw a bit of other stuff in as well. Today, I'm going to be doing food. I'm going to be doing some scones. <laughs> and anybody who's watched for a while know that I did a Tuesday run of scones, but then I stopped to do other things. But I thought, well, we'll do some scones today because I've got a few um, blueberries on my bush. And I thought, well, do scones with them. There's not enough really to do anything with because I've only got a small bush and I've not had it long. So it's only just had like an handful of blueberries, which I'll show you. There we go. Look, I just picked a handful. There's a few other green ones on there, but I thought, well, there's enough there just to mix in and do some scones and um, we'll see how they go. So I'm going to bring you down and I'll have a look what I'm doing. Right, so first of all, I've got eight ounces of self-raising flour, which I'll tip in my bowl. Cut that out of the way. Then I'm going to put two ounces of margarine into that. And I'm going to rub it together. So it makes sort of a breadcrumb effect. Yes, yeah, so I thought I saw these blueberries and I thought well, there's not much there. And I thought, what can I do with them? And I thought, I know, we'll do some scones. So there should be enough there for that. We've um, done quite well in the garden over the weekend because we had a weekend of picking and blanching. So I got loads of blackberries. So we're going to have to do something with them at one point, some point even. I've put them into the freezer at the moment. They're on an open tray in the freezer, so I've got to go and pack them into bags. That's a job I've got to do today. And I notice there's loads more on there already, so we're going to have freezer fulls of them. And the apples are coming along lovely, so we're going to have lots of them. And I've still got some apples in the freezer. So maybe we'll do an apple and blackberry crumble. I do like apple and blackberry together. I mean, more often than not, I like a fruit on its own, so you taste a fruit. But apple and blackberry, I do like. It's quite nice together. I just don't mind apple and raspberry as well. But yeah, um, we did the carrots as well. They were starting to go to seed, so some were ready. Others were just going to seed. I said, right, we'll pick them. And we'd had wood lice affecting them. So we thought we'd pick them. And we've got four bags of them, so we blanched all them, and they're all in the freezer. And spring onions, we picked the rest of them as well. And we planted more. So we're not done bad for the weekend. Won't be long till there'll be more things ready. Like I say, there's more blackberries already. So there we go. Now we're going to add in um, an ounce of sugar. I have to remember then. <laughs> what I'd put in there and we'll pop in these there's probably just over an ounce of these um, blueberries if you were doing rich fruit scones you'd have two ounces of currants or raisins whatever you were putting in at this point but I'm putting in blackberries and it's not two ounces it's just under so we'll mix them in. So I might get some plain scones without them in and I might get some with, which suits me really because um, my daughter, the youngest daughter, doesn't like anything in scones. She likes them plain. So if we get a few plain ones thrown out, then that's pretty good. It works out well for me. And obviously if you've got more blueberries, you'd put more in anyway. So that's that. Now we're going to mix an egg, beat an egg. So we're going to pop one egg in. Right. I'm still trying to get used to buying eggs. I keep looking at my garden and next door but one's got chickens and I hear them in the morning when they're laying and I'm thinking, oh my chickens, I wish I got some chickens. <laughs> I've never really been without chickens and we've had things like that all my life, grown up with things like that. So there's only been a few occasions when I've not had them. Right, let's have that. 
So we're going to get some young ones. And I was saying to Dean, maybe this time we should get a cockerel as well. We've had cockerels before. But if we get one, then we can incubate our own chicks, which we used to do regularly, and I've got an incubator. And I thought, well, we could do that, save having to buy them. It's quite expensive to buy. Let's mix all that in. I may need to add a drop of milk. Let's see how it goes. Can you still see all right? <laughs> I moved my ball along, seemed to slide away, and I've got to check that you can still see. Right. I may just add a drop to this, actually. This is where it goes wrong for me when I start adding drops of milk. So what I'm going to drop is some oat milk. This is my daughter's oat milk. And I'm going to put a bit of that in. Then she'll be able to have a scone as well then. If I can get it to come out. Be careful not to put too much. Make sure that I keep forgetting to turn it your way. I do it every time, don't I? <laughs> every time. It's coming together slowly. And that's something else I've not done for a while as well. I always used to have lots of pastry in my um, freezers. I batch made pastry and froze it. And it was handy because, like, we're coming up to the time of year now where we're inundated with fruit and it's very handy then making pies and things like that there we go so um i must do some of that again right so it's sort of a bit liquidy now because some of the blueberries have broken a bit so we'll get the purpley color right that's done enough and a little bit looser because of the berries breaking but I'll be putting it on a floured surface anyway to flatten it out it's trawling until you get it all in your fingernails isn't that the most annoying part and dough, dough's the worst when you're making bread dough, oh dear I'm getting a right mess with it I try and put it in my bread machine to do but like if you're taking it out then just doing the dough bit oh goodness, you've still got the mess <laughs> so I'm going to go now and just tidy up a bit to make room because I'm going to bring the air fryer out because we're going to air fry them and wash my hands and I'll be back with you in a moment right I've had a tidy up and I've just preheated the air fryer so I'm going to bring you down now I've popped it on the um, mat ready I did my usual trick. I went to put a little bit of paste, uh, pastry flour down and the whole lot come out. So I've got a little pile there. Happens to me every time. <laughs> Always. Right. Rather than rolling pin it flat, I'm going to just press it. Little areas where it is a bit tacky. I'll just put a bit of flour. Press it down nice and firm. I get it to a reasonable thickness I don't want it too flat but I don't want it too high either and I think that might do it to do it I think I'm happy with that <laughs> right let's cut it out actually um, if we move along a little bit better prep the air fryer get it ready I'll just pop a towel down because I've heated it up. There we go. And we'll put one of these in. And what I think I'll do, I'll bring you above me. Then you can see better, I hope. Trouble is, it's so sunny in the kitchen. I can't really see what you can see. So I'm just hoping that I've got you right. Yeah, I think... That's right. That's hot. I'm not touch it. <laughs> right. 
let's press some of these out. I want to put them too close together, but I want them sort of reasonable. So many I can get in. I think I put one more in there for now, and then I can just roll the rest back out. Right, so we'll leave it at that for now so they're not too close together and I can sort that bit of dough out then. So what we're going to do, I've got your level, <laughs> it's all moving about. So we're going to pop them into the air fryer first of all, switch it on, air fry. I'm going to go 180, I'm going to do 8 minutes and hopefully that will do it. I can never remember how long to do it for. I always seem to want to go for 10, but it's better to go a bit under than too far over and it'd be burnt. So 180 air fry, eight minutes and off it goes. So while that's doing, I'm just going to cut a few more out from this bit I've got left so they can go in afterwards and we'll see what they're like in a minute when they're done. Okay, it's beeped, so we're gonna have a look what they look like. Oh, I've moved my towel. I'll just bring my towel back wherever I put it. If I can reach. It's full of flour. <laughs> right, just move them along a bit. So I got three, four, five more out of that dough, which I'll put on in a minute. Oh, they look all right. The blueberries have run a little, a bit like jam. But that's how they look. I'll see if I can get them out and put them on the plate. I'm just going to go behind you and see if I can reach my spatula. I've got to bring it out. Plate. There we go. Let's see if we can get these out with more fingers and thumbs. <laughs> right. Let's see. Yeah, they're coming off all right anyway do like this um, paper it's really good some of them actually look a bit crispy on top maybe it could have done a bit less than eight minutes but we'll see what they're like inside they're doing cartwheels here <laughs> around the paper all right see what they look like better now there we go so you can see there where some's run looks a bit like jam but i'm sure that won't do anything to the flavor they are a little bit flat some of them they haven't risen too brilliantly it's funny because you can use the same recipe and do no end of different varieties of um scones and yet some will rise and others won't rise as well. And yet you can use the exact and same ingredients. So I don't know what that is, whether it's something to do with what you're putting in, like here is a fruit. Maybe it's because it's an acidic fruit. I don't know. And that's sort of not helped it rise. Maybe if I'm using fruit with acid in it, maybe I should use um, a bit of um, baking Oh, you know the stuff, <laughs> the baking stuff. <laughs> Can't remember the name for it. I'm old. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you use some of that in it to help it rise, I don't know. But anyway, it hinges on the taste because it's not like I'm going to put anything in the middle of it. Can slice it and put butter in, I suppose. But we'll see what they taste like. They're red hot at the moment, so I'm going to leave them cool down. So while they're cooling, I'm going to put the next lot on and then... Um, by the time they're done, these should be cooling off and we can have a look what they're like in the middle and what they actually taste like. So I'm just going to put them down there and then I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, I've 
cooked the second lot and I did a little experiment. I knocked the temperature down a bit. So I did the first ones on 180, but I went to 160 for the last few. And this is the difference. Bring you down. There we go. That's the difference. You can see that they are the 160 and they're a bit darker. They're the 180. But I think, I don't know whether it's just me, but they seem to have risen a little bit more than those so i wonder if they're better on the lower temperature without looking through all my backlog of scone videos i've done and seeing what temperatures i've done them on i don't know <laughs> maybe i've done different temperatures each side i don't know each side each time so yeah but they've cooked all right they seem to have done anyway they're a bit hot at the minute so i can't hold them for long but we'll taste test one of the first lot. They've cooled down now. So I'll take the flatter one. It's got a bit of blueberry in. We'll break it in half. There we go. That's cooked nice in the middle. We haven't got lots of blueberry because you can see I didn't have a lot of them. But there's enough. Let's see. Mmm. And taste that blueberry. That tastes really nice. <laughs> mm. That's cooked really well. As in not burnt really well, but it's cooked just right. I think the ones where the blueberries have run might be really blueberry taste, you know. Now, when I bite into the blueberry, you can taste that. That tastes really nice. The scone itself, even the plain bits are lovely. Tastes nice. So, I think that's really nice. I don't know if I should have broken the blueberries, mashed them a bit, but maybe that would have been too runny a mix. But as they are, they're just right. It's just I didn't have a great deal of blueberries, but that works out well for me because my youngest daughter doesn't like them. And... Even though it looks like every one of them's got at least some in, she'll be able to pick it out. <laughs> she doesn't mind doing that. <laughs> so they've turned out really well. But I don't know, the 180 is not bad. It's cooked lovely in the middle with half a rip. As you can see, it's cooked nice. It's not hard or anything like that. These are slightly lighter because I cooked them. I want 60, but they still look okay. Then if we should break one and see. It's a bit hot, so that's any trouble. Uh, there we go. So it's just the same, nice in the middle. They're cooked, they're cooked underneath as well. So I think 180, 160 hasn't made a great deal of difference, other than the 180 are a bit. Um, darker on top but as for cooking through both temperatures have cooked through fine and taste okay well I'm assuming the lower temperature will taste okay um, I did the same amount of minutes with the lower ones although I, it was just the temperature I lowered I still did eight minutes so it was just the same so yeah they've come out all right I know what to do when I get blueberries now but no my look the bush are going to die off <laughs> it's not looking very healthy as in the sense of the leaves are a bit crispy I don't know if it's all the sun or what but I did have two of those bushes and last year one did die off and that was that so anyway at least we've had some homegrown blueberries <laughs> so that's it for today I don't know if I'll see you with the vlog tomorrow or not. I might cut down on cooking for a little bit while it's hot because, yeah, it's really hot. I feel really hot and mithered and you feel the heat from the air fryer and it's just terrible. So I think I might just leave off cooking a bit while it's so warm at the minute. But yeah, um, like I said, I don't know if I'm back tomorrow because I'm not sure whether I'm shopping tomorrow or whether I'm shopping Thursday. I think I'm having my grandson Thursday as well and the little two-year-old one. So if I have him, I might not be shopping. <laughs> but we'll see. So, But if you don't see me tomorrow, you will see me the day after. So until the next one, take care, everybody. Bye.